So I have a very simple equation written here. A plus B is equal to C. And what I want to think about, if we know that A is an integer, so let's say that this is the set of all integers right over here, integers. We know that A is an integer, so let's say that's A there. We also know that B is an integer. It could be the same integer, but I'll draw it so it looks like it's another one, but it doesn't have to be. They could be the same integer. B is an integer. If we're adding these two integers, are we definitely going to get another integer? Do we know that C is going to be an integer? And I encourage you to pause the video and think about it. Well, when you thought about it, you might have come up with some cases. Well, what if A and B are both one? Then for sure, C is going to be two, and C is going to be an integer. Well, is that always going to be the case? Well, it is. There are ways to prove it. I'm not going to go into it now. But when you have a situation like this, when you're able to take two members of a set, in this case, two members of a set, and perform an operation on it, and always get another member of the set, and it could be A or B again, or it could be another distinct member of the set. I'll draw it as another distinct member of the set. Whenever you have this, so you have some operation. In this case, it is addition. So when you're performing the addition operation, on two members of the set, you, get, you, you stay in the set. C is also going to be a member of that set. So one way to think about it, we're going, we're going like this. And we are performing this addition operation. Whenever you see a circumstance like this, we, call, we say that this set, the set of integers, is closed under addition. Let me write that down. So this means that the set of integers, integers, is closed under, under addition. So once again, you're going to hear this idea of closure. There's a general term that we're talking about is closure. When you take some, especially higher mathematics course, but you might even hear it in some of your high school courses, and it might seem like this really advanced thing. But all it's saying is you have a set, you have some operation that you can perform on members of the set, and if every time you perform that operation on members of the set, you, get, you stay in the set, the result is a member of the set, then you say that the set is closed under that operation. The set is closed. In this case, the operation is addition. You say the set is closed under addition. And we can ask ourselves that same question about other things. Is the set of, is the set of integers closed under, closed under, actually let's take some examples. Is it closed under multiplication? Multiplication. And I encourage you to pause the video and think about it. And then think about, is it closed under division? Is it closed under division? Is it closed under subtraction? Is it closed under subtraction? I encourage you to think about all these different operations. Well, let's take them one by one. Multiplication, if you take two integers and you were to multiply it, you actually will always get another integer. So the set of integers is closed under multiplication. Now what about division? Well, it's very easy to prove a case in which I'm, op I'm dividing two integers and not getting another integer. For example, I could say, let me just do a very simple one. One divided by two. One and two are both integers, but what's that going to give me? That's going to give me one half, which is not another integer. This is a rational number, but not an integer. So if we were to extend our sets right over here, all integers are also rational, but all rationals are not integers necessarily. So if this is rational, rational numbers here, this case of one divided by two, so if that's one and this is two, when we performed division, we went out of the set. So when we performed division, we went out of that set to something that's not an integer, but it is a rational number. So the set of integers is not closed under division. Subtraction, sure. And once again, I'm not going to rigorously prove it here, but take any two integers, you indeed are going to get another, you are going to get another integer. So the whole idea here is to just give you a, a brief introduction to the notion of closure. The idea that if you have a set, and if you perform an operation on members of that set, and you always get a member of your original set, then that, then that set is closed under that operation. Now what, it ma what matters is, is the set that you're talking about. In this case, we talked a lot about integers, and we talked about addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. But you could think about the set of polynomials, and whether they are closed under addition, which they actually are. Or the set of rational numbers, are they closed under 
exponentiation. There's all sorts of things we could think about. But hopefully this gives you a good sense of what we mean when we say closure or for a set being closed under some operation.